any examination of Michigan's infrastructure would um, tell us that enormous investment is needed, most famously, of course, in our deplorable and sad roads. But uh, this seems beyond finding extra nickels and dimes. How do you fix our roads, our bridges, our water lines, our electrical grid, perhaps our digital infrastructure, without asking Michiganders to pay for it? Senator Colbeck. Well, thank you very much for that question, uh, Dylan. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. First of all, we have plenty of money for the roads right now as it is. The key is to focus on higher quality road construction. It wasn't three weeks ago that we had a section of 696 that was actually um, paved that uh, two weeks later was actually torn up. I think that sets a record for the shortest lifespan of any road in the state of Michigan. The key is to focus on the quality of the roads. Um, if you actually want to talk about tax cuts, I'm the only one that's gone off and proposed completely eliminating the personal income tax. And I don't impact the roads budget for that. I don't impact the transportation budget in order to go off and do that. Um, what you do is go off and have a series of expense-based uh, um, milestones that once you achieve those expense reductions, then you ratchet down the income tax. It's very straightforward. We don't impact roads, we don't impact our schools, and we don't impact our public safety with the approach that I take. But what we do do is fix the roads and actually lower the cost of living in our state so that we can compete with the fastest growing states in the nation for uh, the people to come back into our state and grow Michigan again. Dr. Hines. I believe that we can fix our roads without increasing taxes, and I've proposed a plan of taking our income tax from 4.25 down to 3.9. That's pre-Grand Home tax time. That's $875 million, and do that for two years in a row, 875 for two years in a row, plus the $1.2 billion from the road tax of 2015. Do that for two years. Get our roads in reasonably good shape and then start to ratchet down our income tax. So I think it can, done. I, it can be done, I know it can be done. Of course, we have to fix the roads with good quality material that lasts a long time, that requires minimal maintenance. We have to fix our potholes, like a dentist fixes a cavity in the tooth. You, you grind it out, you clean it out, you coat it, you put the right material in, you pound it down, smooth it off, and it's even with the tooth. That's how we need to fix our potholes, that's how we need to fix our roads so they last a long time. Lieutenant Governor Kelly. Generations of politicians have failed our state on fixing the roads. First, Jennifer Granholm left our state literally billions, our transportation fund, billions of dollars in debt. Through, through disciplined budgeting, we have paid off about half of that. We need to continue and pay off the rest of that debt and not borrow anymore, as Gretchen Whitmer has proposed. That'll put an extra $200 million every single year into our roads once it's paid off. We need to fully phase in the $1.2 billion new money into roads and at the same time raise the standards. So when those roads are finally replaced with this new $1.4 billion total, then they will last longer. We also need to put higher technology into the roads like we did on 23 between Brighton and Ann Arbor to lower the overall cost. That was lowered by 75% and finally we need to require the coordination of repair, maintenance, and replacement. So you're not tearing up the road this year for sewer and tearing up the road next year for fiber and, and repaving it and, and uh, replacing a culvert the year after. All of these things together will create a better that future is, for our that roads. That is time. Senator Colbeck is uh, asking for a rebuttal. You've got 30 seconds, Senator. Yeah, last question. There's a lot of things associated with it. Tough to squeeze it in. So I just want to highlight, I'm the only candidate up here that identifies how we can actually improve the quality of the roads. We've got advanced construction techniques that feature things like a cement hydration catalyst and a sealant over the roads, costs about 15% more up front, but the roads last three to four times as long. If you want to fix the roads, you got to go with the engineer. And Attorney General Schutte, your original time now, you've got a minute on this. We can't be a first world economy if we have third world roads. And I travel all across the state, our two peninsulas in 83 counties, and uh, I've experienced pothole heaven. Here's what we need to do very specifically. Number one, we need to have a complete review of the Michigan Department of Transportation and how they allocate dollars. Second, we need to have warranties and guarantees for our roads. Thirdly, we need to make sure that the $250 million will come back into the budget because of the elimination of the prevailing wage statute. We dedicate that to roads. And finally, it's a $58 billion budget. Life's about priorities. We need to make Michigan a priority in our roads. Now, um, the Democrats in Whitmer, they just want to raise taxes, billions of dollars of taxes, which will cause people to leave this state. We need to make sure we dedicate money to roads. That's how you do it. Lieutenant Governor Cowley is asking for a rebuttal on this one. I just want to point out that Bill Schutte did not give an answer to that question. We're going to review a department. We're going to make priorities. 
Why don't you explain what those priorities are? We owe the people of the state of Michigan real answers. That's what tonight is about. It's about the future. It's not about sound bites. It's not about platitudes. We need real plans of action. Speaking of the future, that's largely the focus of my next question. There's been a lot of focus on the performance of schools in our most troubled districts like Detroit. But the truth is, over the last 20 years, uh, the performance of schools all over the state of Michigan has fallen dramatically against our national and international competition. Statistics show it actually has little to do with race, little to do with poverty. As reported by Bridge Magazine, Michigan's white, higher income, fourth grade students fell from 17th in the country in 2003 to 50th, just 12 years later. What are we doing wrong in educating the children of Michigan? Dr. Hines. Money will not solve this problem. You know, money can buy us out of a lot of issues, but it can't buy us out of the educational problem. We need to go back to the basics of reading, writing, and arithmetic. I, I believe that we need school choice and local control. We need to get rid of Common Core. But in addition to that, we need to have a plan. And I believe that we need reading coaches in the classroom, one-on-one, one-on-two. -on -one, that may take some alternative certification, but kids need to learn. And we need continuity between three- and four-year-olds all the way up to third and fourth grade. We need to teach teachers how to teach reading. Believe it or not, most teachers don't know. And we need a teaching program that's consistent, that works, phonics. My two oldest boys, I taught them how to read when we were in Africa through homeschooling. I taught my dad, who only went to third grade, how to read using phonics, and we need to reinstitute a program that will work. And I understand one program won't fit everybody, but we need to that be is, consistent. That is time, Dr. Hines. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Kelly. Just earlier today, I met Janae Gonzalez.